All right. Welcome to another edition of the Hellion Rocks. I've got an awesome guest on the Today Show. You're not going to believe who we've got. Randy, the arsonist Cooper. Brother, how you doing? Good, all good, man. Out here in Chicago, soaking up the no sunshine out here. But uh, out here, surrounded some, by some uh, good buddies of mine, and uh, and the uh, join the uh, Emperors and Elephants out here with uh, Jason uh, Mute, you know, being guitar guy, filming crew, Nam Show, and been a buddy of mine for a while, boy. And uh, man, there you go, familiar face. And uh, he lost a guitar player, and that opening came available, and I jumped all over it, brother. Yeah, that's the big news. Everybody's real excited to hear that. Yeah, here's a uh, man I rolled across Jason probably about oh seven and the end of the you know, he just we bonded right off the gate right out of the gate and uh you know, just in contact with him constantly. He uh you know, played a uh you know, major instrument role in the uh had his hand in on the um, you know, the hippies with ding guitars and uh rolling through that NAM show and all them um videos you see and then commercials and stuff, so for Nam, he always subliminally put in our music in there and stuff too. So he, uh, yeah. he's really helped out. Yeah, turned into be a great guy. And there, uh, man, I was in. I had a layover. I was out there in Pittsburgh playing some music with some some people, Zero Fame, and uh, just kind of guest appearances and playing. Uh, they've been playing pissed off and mad about it in their set for about two years, and invited me to come out and play it with them. And I uh, went and did that and. I was came coming back to Texas, had a layover out here in Chicago, and I called up Jason, you know, and told him I could be to him in about an hour and a half. And if I ever, uh, if I could hand pick me a band, I would start with the foundation and pick him as my drummer. And about two weeks later, man, there's my phone call. Nice. Started the ball, right? Well, that's, that's a good thing. You know, you, you, you talked about a couple of, of guest spots. You did uh, a couple of good brothers of mine from Scattered Hamlet. You guys did a, you did a track for those guys, right? Yes, sir. Now, um, uh, Adam, you know, we um, did some touring around the country with Adam several times. And, you know, he's just a guy that, man, you meet that guy, you're going to fall in love with him, man. Really, really good people. Uh, whole band, you know, just really good camp in that band. And uh, well, it's, Adam's a Pittsburgh guy. So when I went out there to Pittsburgh, um, you know, I was about three days later, you know, I'm a, I got a, the reason I'm in Pittsburgh, I got a girl out there, you know. So that's the main reason. To, um, <laughs> she, uh, yeah, well, I rehabbed this shoulder, you know, and uh, that's where I ended up transferring my rehab with the downtime, and she didn't like the way I was, my attitude of talking and where I was at there in Denison, Texas, and I was there, you know, just kind of down, and um, she, we got it transferred out there and started rehabbing his shoulder, and there's Adam sitting out there, you know, and I go visit him, he's got a home studio, and, you know, we're over there, uh, he's showing me some of the tracks I got and hitting him with a little, little bit of music that was kind of in that ballpark. And, you know, and just threw a little rhythm down for him. And, and uh, he went out there and tracked the record and came back and brought me a solo back, you know, to do for him. So that was it. That was what I got to do. Now, man, once I did one of them, that opened up some doors to, uh, you know, jump aboard, you know, several of them. You know, I did some down in Houston with some people. And, man, that was that was it. Well, once I knocked one of them out, I was like, man, I could do this all, you know, all day long. But, uh, yeah, I had his records out and running around and, uh, just missed him in Green Bay on Tuesday, but he's right here, uh, right down the road from us tonight and tomorrow night. And, uh, so that's what I'm doing is getting, um, getting it ready and getting the gear ready and just, I'm going to go out there and, uh, I'll be jumping in with him on stage, you know, and playing, playing that track with him. Awesome. That's, that's a cool thing. Yeah. Um, you mentioned your shoulder, uh, that was a shoulder injury. What, uh, what happened with that? Some nerve damage? Yeah, uh, torn tendon in it. And not exactly for sure how it happened or it just came on. Um, uh, just been just excruciating pain right there coming off that making that peacemaker record. And uh just kind of man, I just I mean, even to brush my teeth, put in my contacts was it was starting to be an issue. Didn't know exactly what was going on. I was able to uh you know, get my uh strap that guitar on with that arm hanging down on my right it's my right shoulder. So where I'm holding that pick and Man, when it's down there by them strings and I'm holding that pick, I was fine, but it got to the point to where uh, I could uh, only play for about, about 30, 40 minutes. And once that arm fatigued with the burn down the bicep, it was done. I couldn't shake it off in between songs or nothing. It was what my mind was telling my pick hand to do. It wasn't wasn't reacting with the accuracy, and it was uh, I was barely hanging on to that pick. Went got an MRI. Results came back, torn tendon, and a ganglion cyst attached to it. 
and it was a uh, surgery fix, you know. So we uh, got it fixed up, um, then I rehabbed it, and uh, that's why I said, you know, transferred the rehab up there to Pittsburgh and went through that. And right around Thanksgiving, um, I finished that up, and, you know, now I can then – um, you know, it didn't come that long. I had to get back on my feet and get in some jam rooms and just start playing. And, you know, now I can stand up and play so long, my feet hurt. You know, my feet are <laughs> off my dang arm wood, you know. So, yeah, I'm out here swinging now, you know, feeling good about it. That's awesome. Yeah, a lot of people were, were concerned about your injury and hoping you got better. And that was a question that a couple people had sent in to me as they wanted to know what happened. Um, Man, another question know, that – Go ahead, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people want to know how you picked up the name The Arsonist. Oh, uh, right. You know, the hometown, I'm, um, I kind of take it as our spiritual leader because, you know, I'm on fire for the Lord and we're, you know, uh, praying all the time, you know, grabbing all the guys and the hippies and got them in the circle and we're just, you know, just praying. Favor, man, safe travels and, and, uh, things like that. Once I got each member in there in that full circle of praying, man, you could really, uh, you know, power prayer work. Well, you could tell that uh, doors were open and there was just just things happening that it was just falling our way, you know. And um, but um, Big Dad, you know, he he pretty well named it the arsonist because of uh, I'm just out there on fire. I'm just playing with fire, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I approach uh, every song with a uh, wide open, you know, even at practice. I'm not holding back at all, man. I don't know any other way, but you know, on ten. So that's where that's I think it came what? from. And, Big Dad yeah, called it the arsonist, and it stuck right out of the gate, probably probably oh three oh four, and uh, you know now it's a pretty um, pretty worldwide little thing, you know, for me. So that's going to be what that's going to be <laughs> be with me forever. I do believe. I think so, and that's a true statement. You know, that's a great nickname for you because when I did see, I happened to I've only got you once live, and I swear smoke was coming off the guitar. I, you know that. Uh, your, your statement that you hear all over the place is, is as accurate as hell. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I think that's what, that's the way I call it. But Big Dad, he called it first, you know, that, that uh, it stuck. And, uh, you know, now we're out here, uh, once we, you know, got it trademarked. And, uh, you know, out here in, uh, Jason here, he's the guy, uh, you know, just making, uh, man, you probably see his dog tags just all over the place, man. He does merch for all these, all the bands, big bands out here and stuff. And, uh, you know, he started hitting me with March, and we started running with this arsonist thing. And, um, and I got Chad Erickson up here making straps for me, and, and um, you know, Doug, you know, just went ahead and went with it. That headstock I got with that Texas flag on it, and, yep. and uh, you know, throwing out some March here, some T-shirts, and, and stuff like that. So it's it's going to stick, and it's um, you know, been pretty good, man. It's a I had a show the other night, and uh, there was a guy who had one of my shirts on, and I just smiled. You know, it's kind of Kind of funny to me, but uh, yeah, it's really, it's all good, man. It's really good to be back too. You know, I was, uh, man, when I was down, it had a, not only was it physically, it was mentally, you know. And uh, then you sit there and you got a record coming out, and and uh, I'm still rehabbing, not able to to get back up there and uh, watch that, you know, go down. And you know, it's hurting my heart. Uh, kind of when I was ready to go, man, they wasn't ready for me to come back. And I sat there idle, just kind of waiting on it, waiting, 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 man, and that. Uh, Never got that call, and um, man, I just I started jumping in on some of these records with some people, and then uh, you know I just you know once that I figured out, man, I, man, I got I got to get out there in this jam, you know, and and uh, got jumped around a little bit, um, just kind of helping you know different bands out from from Pittsburgh to uh, down in Houston. I did the same thing with, with a few people. I got some good people down there that that I've known. It's all just just by meeting people out here on the road, and. Um, once I threw it out there that, you know, I was, uh, you know, like to take on some of these, you know, guest spots on some records and stuff. That's, that's kind of how it ended up. And I got to do shows and I got a good buddy out there in a band called Frank Case out of Houston, you know, and got to do a, that was my first really get back on stage other than sitting in a song or something with a band. And, uh, we did a Toys for Top thing through Christmas, you know, and just, um, packed house and, and he takes that stage, boy, you can't, can't stay away from it. You know, I, I tasted the stage yeah, at like seventh grade at a talent show, and I've spent the rest of my life trying to get right back on it. You know? Nice. Um, talking about all your merchandise, a lot of people have uh, wondered where can they pick up your stuff? Oh, we're working on the PayPal account, really just through Facebook. I'm just, you know, they're hitting me up. I'm, um, you know, just personally kind of mailing stuff out to people um, right now. 
and uh, we're working on getting that uh, the PayPal thing up. And uh, you know, we're coming with uh, with Jason here, you know, with dog tags, and then I've got the you know, there's t-shirts and the uh, he's into leather working, so we've got uh, leather uh, wristbands and just you know all kinds of little knickknack things we're coming up with, and and uh, just you know just kind of running with and. So I'm not going to, you know, we'll have several different little items, but I'm working on getting that PayPal, that store up and running. It's coming. It's almost there. All right. Now, getting, you know, but getting man, you can hit me up. They can hit me. Anybody can hit me up personally on the Facebook, and uh, okay. man, I can make that happen. I am, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I just, you know, I'm just mailing them out to them as they come in right now, and um, that's what we're doing is pushing to get that uh, that uh, online store up. And stuff, and then through the uh, emperors and elephants, we're going to run with it. You know, we'll, it'll be on their site too. So either one, me or me or the band. Yeah, talking about that new the, the new project, emperors and elephants. Uh, you guys going to record some new stuff? You guys in the studio? What's the plan for that? Yeah, we've uh, you know they got a library of some stuff. They and um, they all come in um, to what they've been rolling with. You know, the right when they uh. You know, they got plans, you know, that's, uh, you know, everybody wants to be a dang rock star, you know, so they want to get out and throw records out and get out in the ball game and just tour the, tour the world, you know, country and stuff. And their, one of their guitar players, uh, just was happy being, uh, kind of a regional Chicago guy. And I'm always in communication with Jason. And, uh, just once that, uh, once they, they start getting ready for their game plan, they, they've got, a, uh, fixing to start scratch tracking some stuff. Uh, the direction where they were headed and what they're wanting to do, you know, this guy wasn't, um, you know, up for that, you know, the turn and stuff. So once he dropped, um, you know, I, and like I said, I dropped throwing that in Jason's ear. Well, if I could start me a band, I'd start with the foundation of you'd be my drummer, you know. And, I mean, that was a seed planted right there. So that got me up here um, and um, worked up their uh, library material, and I've got to throw some songs on them. So we're going to hopefully hand over, you know, uh, 12, 13, probably 14, 15 tracks, and uh, we're uh, in in the studio right now. They've they've uh, when I came up here, spring break, rolled through the set with the band, and uh, definitely a go. Went back to Texas, buttoned up everything I got, packed up all my gear, and sent about 500 pounds of gear out here. And, and uh, within two weeks, you know, I'm sitting here in a jam room. You know, I'm in right off the plane flight. Um, they pick me up, we go get the gear, unbox it, set it up, run through the set, load it up, head up to West Concert and open up for about 3,000 people with seven dust right. cold chamber. You know, so, man, welcome back, you know. Um, yep. But that's it. We're, um, you know, we're uh, straight through that off that weekend. I uh, played three shows that weekend and straight into uh, um, getting my parts in on the record. The scratch tracks were there. They went laid down the foundation of the drums. Bass is done. Um Pretty much all the rhythms. We got all my stuff on there. Uh, pretty much yesterday, I knocked out a ton of stuff, and uh, but I got a sore finger today. Actually, but, uh, did most of. The, I got all the fill licks. Um, the other guitar player is a shredder or cat. You know, man, killer, killer guitar player. Uh, different flavor. You're going to be able to definitely tell uh, him, him and me. You're going to know when Randy Cooper's over there throwing down a solo. <laughs> You'll be able to hear the difference. And. Uh, Man, I gotta be on my toes. This oh Jeff is uh he is a shred cat, man. He comes from the Paul Gilbert school of uh of uh licks, you know. He even won a contest and got to do a guitar lesson with Paul Gilbert, you know. And uh yeah. his, so he is yeah, definitely a class player. And so we got a lot of split solos, kinda like a Judas Priest thing. And uh yep. so we're where we're bouncing back and forth and um I get, um, uh, there's just little, in, through the, through the tracks, man, I'm hearing little spots that, uh, you got, you know, the, the big chorus comes out of it and breaks down into a little piece of music that, uh, might have a four measures before the singing starts again. So all the little gaps, I got to fill all those. Um, got this where I got to pull out some good noise making stuff, you know, and just fill that. Um, knock out all my split solos and I've got three songs that are, is all me. So I've got, that's what I got left. I got my three big solos left. So I'm going to take a little time uh, through the weekend and, uh, you know, really work up something that will raise an eyebrow. So i got a little time to play with it. And that's where I'm at. i got three solos left, and I'm, my part's done. I knocked out all uh, pretty much um, 90% of my stuff yesterday. Uh, hey, I just got a message from a fan of yours, uh, Eva Bent from up in Alberta, Canada, who just wanted me to say hi and that they love you guys up there. I know Eva, yes. 
Yeah. Sure. She just uh, she just messaged me and said, "Make sure that I told you hi for her." So there we go, Eva. Randy yeah. Cooper saying hi to you. Yeah, I got awesome. yeah. They uh, you know played up there. We was at the Hard Rock in um, Pittsburgh, and some of the can- um, Canadian people came down, and you know got to bond with them, and you know trip you out to somebody uh, drive across the the uh, you know that line. Of um, to come over there and hear you and see you, but now I really bonded with them. And some of their friends even brought me some dang Canadian syrup for my pancake. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. I know, and I get gifts out here, man. I'm walking around. I got the, I got the best dime bag collection ever. You know, of just shirts. You know, and I mean, I walk in, hey, I got you this shirt. You know, and I'm like, right on, man. I got the whole wardrobe of dime bag stuff. And, you know, like the, uh, you know, like I got them dimes on my headstock. You know, I'm. Man, I, I, the first set I had to find right when, uh, you know, we lost our hero there, and that was uh, me and Charlie Jack. I got the same white guy and sound guy from my hometown that I've had for, you know, my whole career until we get out until we get out of town. And, uh, you know, we actually took both of them with us on the road a little bit, but, uh, you know, neither one of them, their home base, you know, there. But maybe me and Charlie Jack was sitting there, and we're all bummed out. We're at Cowboy's house, original THC drummer. And, man, we uh, – uh, my son's mother – um, manager of Burger King, so uh told her to find us some dimes, you know, the 66 and the 04, and, man, she was digging around. We could find them 04 dimes easy, but she um, finally, you know, took a little bit, a couple of weeks, and she came across these uh, 66 dimes, and, man, I stuck them on my head uh, stock, and you know, Charlie Jack was, uh he was with Sonny Satterfield on the uh, Vulgar Display Tour doing lights for him, um, and so he had the laminate passes for Vulgar, and he stuck his dimes on there, you know, and Man, we was you know, I started, you know, we was the first two to stick them suckers up and man, I'm telling you everywhere we go. I mean, I got people I go to Europe, you know, and people's like bringing my guitar, dude, I got I want you to see my guitar, man, I want you to see my dimes, you know, and you know, they're uh you know, it's just keeping the spirit alive, man. That you know, um that's you know, I mean I that's why I'm playing music and you know, I mean I picked it up early before, but man, once I seen, you know, Dime play and being a Texas guy and uh seen him more play more than anybody, you know, it just uh you know, just got in my soul, and um, you know that that was it, man. But that, that's a pretty cool little thing, man. We've seen them dimes all over the place. We just went to Hell Yeah too the other night, you know. So we got to see Vinnie Paul, Maxwell, and Villa, and him, Dean Katz, you know. So uh, the Dink guitar family up here is pretty well connected. Nice. That's uh, you know, one of the things that that uh, when I did see you immediately, I felt the spirit you know, being carried on, you know, like I'm shining down on you. So that's, you know, a lot of respect for you for, for carrying that spirit on. You know, you just, you get to, uh, you sit down there and, you know, learn lessons and learn lessons and stuff like that. But man, I mean, it's to stand out in the crowd and watch somebody like that, you know, play. And I, you know, the first time I, you know, got to hear him and see him play was, you know, I moved to Denison, Texas when I was 16 and they was in my hometown opening up for Doc and, and, uh, you know, seen that, and Randy Rhodes just got killed, and I'm like, and I mean, he played, you know, just, uh, he had, you know, about four or five songs just pieced together with the solo pieces, you know, Goodbye to Romance, and um, just nailed it, you know, just it killed it, you know, and um, standing there, a guy that's a year older than me, and being in awe of um, watching that, you know, instantly became my hero, you know, followed that, and, you know, that was, uh, I tried to get one of the guitars for several years, and I mean, you know, uh, the company's out of, of um, you know, already gone down, you know, because they was from uh, 77 to 84. And, uh, you know, this is like 19, probably 86, 87. And, man, I, you know, couldn't find any of them guitars, you know, around. You might see one in a pawn shop that was, you know, just way out of reach to get your hands on it. And always hit Dime up for uh, them guitars because he just had a stack of them. And then, you know, he would uh, get them Floyd Rose and pick up and all that, but he just had some that he never even, he'd just buy them up and they'd just be stock, you know, string through the body and stuff and never got to them. And talked about getting me one or selling me one and never happened. And I, I went to a guitar show in, uh, like, 1988, and they're at the LaBella String booth there in uh, Dallas. And, you know, I'm like, I hit him up, ah, oh, man, just bring me one of the guitars. And he, uh, and he said, man, they had a line that was like, two miles long, you know, and he said, man, when I get down this line, I got a buddy that's got one over here from the music store, and uh, when that cleared, you know, he uh, he grabbed me and uh, took me over there, and the dude had two of them, and uh, both of them was tobacco sunburst, and I bought the, seemed like the better of the two, 
And that was, that started it right there. I got my first Dean right then. I hadn't even, I hadn't even played another guitar since then. Nice. Pretty so, good. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, you mentioned earlier you played for a long time. What got you actually, what inspired you to pick up a guitar and, and start playing? Ace Freely. Ace Freely. You know, like, oh, yeah. You know, and get, uh, my first Kiss record, you know, early on in grade school, and, you know, they just entombed me, man. I didn't even know that there was another band out there. I thought, I don't think until I heard Cat Scratch <laughs> Fever. <laughs> Not at all, really. And, uh, you know, once Nugent stepped up, and then, you know, there it was, too. And, and uh, you know, but, yeah, really Ace, that was been a hero of mine, you know, the whole time. Um, you know, I'm ninth grade um, in, uh, out of Dumas, Texas, and our concerts we got to go to is over to Amarillo. Uh, Creatures of the Night Tour is rolling through Amarillo, and um, no, it's just general mission, man. If you're first in line to get your ticket tour, you got about a hundred yard dash to the front row. And uh, you know, me and my buddies skipped school there, and had a friend that had a hardship, and went down there about there and stood in line front row when they started. And then uh, Paul Stanley breaks the guitar in half and throws it out in the crowd, boom, and I catch it. So I've carried that thing with me since like ninth grade, and then I get on Rock, Oklahoma, and you know, H. Freely's doing the show there, and. Uh, the uh send the guitar in to uh my managers and stuff that uh, became my manager, Brad White and Max Baker, they're the ones that that's their little that's their baby Rock Oklahoma. So first year of it, you know, we're on the bill and uh get to, uh, I'm carrying that guitar with me because I know Ace is there and I actually get it signed by him but I don't get to meet him, man. They just sent it through and I get it and I'm more than happy about that. But we come back uh you know, a year later and I'm doing Ride for Dime there in Dallas. Corey Taylor's uh there um, and Ace is there, uh, you know, a lot. So you got Vinnie Paul on drums, you got Bob Zill on bass, uh, Corey Taylor singing, Ace Freely on guitar, and they're doing rock and roll all night. And he walks yeah. in, um, you know, my, we was coming from New Mexico. We played outside of Albuquerque with Queen's Rock and Warrant and huh? all that at that casino out there, the Big Sky, the something like that casino. Uh, I know. Yeah, that was the right? show. I, that's the show I met you at. Right on. So, you know, we're rolling in from that. Our tech and our crew went ahead to get our gear out there to the ride, you know, that next day. So they're there early setting up the rigs. Well, when Ace walks in, my tech set up, you know, they had a whole back line of crank amps and D drums. And uh, we set up. I wanted to play through. I like to play through my rig, you know, so I got the two marshals out there. And uh, when Ace walks in, you know, he walks right up to the marshals and starts, you know, fix, turn them on. Who's, You know, and they're like, whoa, whoa, they're, 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 you got to play through these, these cranks. And he's... You know, he's wanting to play Marshall, you know, so they find out who they are, and my tech ain't there, and we're all sleeping, he can't get me up, and he, and Zach, my tech knows, man, whatever Ace wants, Randy would say, Ace gets, you know, and that's exactly what I'd say, hey, whatever he wants, we have. Well, he, he fired him up on my number two head, that, my backup, that I've never, I didn't have, never had any glitches on my number one, hadn't fired that dude up in a while, and she's been riding around in a, you know, bouncy ass trailer. Um, man, they fired up and they get about halfway through rock and roll all night and it pops with a puff of smoke coming out of it. And, uh, they just, they switch it and, you know, Ace is like, oh man, we're sorry, you know, and his text up there, I'm talking to my, hey, it's, it's Ace really, man, we'll fix it, whatever we need to do. And, you know, blew a fuse. Um, but it kept popping him, you know. So finally, when I get up and around, you know, Ace, or, uh, Zach calls me to the room. He goes, hey, yeah, everything's fine, man. He goes, but man, uh, Ace is here. I got the moody. And he goes, man, he wanted to play on your rig. I'm like, did you, you know, let him? He goes, I already did. And he goes, but man, he blew your amp up. I said, what? He said, yeah, Ace really blew up your amp. And I just turned the phone. I turned to all the guys. Ace really blew up my amp, y'all. And everybody <laughs> in the room, we start cheering. Wow. <laughs> so I get to the venue and, uh, I get to the venue, you know, and his tech comes up to me, you know, this is Ace really, you know, we'll fix it, whatever we need to do. And I'm like, not, don't worry about it, man. And I get the fuse, you know, I still got the fuse, the fuse that Ace blew, you know, and, uh, it ended up being more than a fuse, you know, got a little bit of stuff in it. it cost me a little over a hundred bucks to fix, but man, that's priceless. And, uh, you know, he's like, can we do anything for you? What can we do? And I said, I want to meet him. And, you know, so that was it. I get to meet Ace and, and, uh, stuff like that. So that's, you know, that's the reason I started playing. And not only did, uh, you know, did I get to meet him, he played through my rig and blew up one of my amps. <laughs> That's a that's a pretty good little story right there. And man, when he was on stage, you know, they got everybody, all the bands and stuff, and when they're doing rock and roll all night, um, you know, with the crowd and everything there, man, when Ace is uh he goes into that solo, man, and you can you can watch it on video on that uh 
all-star jam rides for diamond. Man, I mean, I'm running at Ace like full board. I mean, I'm just screaming, go, Ace, go. And, man, he he just turns. He looked, he had deer in the headlights. He looked like I was about to tackle him. Man, he turns towards the drum riser and that, that wall of stacks and uh, just kind of looked back over his shoulder, and I was just screaming in his ear, you know. But I think he thought I was about to take him down, but I was so excited, man. It was <laughs> Uh, my guys call it humping his leg, you know, and you can actually say that. <laughs> yes, I hump a his leg. <laughs> That's a great story, man. That's a great story. So, uh, on your your playing, uh, you know, you, we we know what inspired you. Did you have any formal training, or is this all self taught? Oh man, I just I learned from everybody, and there was some older cats in my hometown that you know gave me the foundation of it. Uh, that was, you know, I took it from there. Once I learned how to tune up to a record or, you know, cassette tape, man, that was it. I wanted to start playing what I listened to, you know, and ACDC and just Juice Priest. I didn't just learn a song, you know. I'd learn. I'd get in there and dig up the library. I'd learn the record, you know, and, yeah. and that was it. Just it started that, you know. Uh, man, it ain't like nowadays, you know, how them kids have just got the whole, man, if you want to learn something from Van Halen, you can go online and learn it from Van Halen, you know, or Zach Wild or something, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was over there wearing out cassette tapes, you know, back and forth, back and forth, <laughs> slowing down a record to 33, trying to get that lick or something, you know. But that was it. Just uh, It was me against that guitar. So pretty well self-taught. But, you know, I just I learned uh, the, all the theory, the, you know, just uh, got into the scales and had some good people around me that was class act players. And anybody that struck up something that I uh, struck, raised an eyebrow to me, man, I mean, I'd I got it from him. You know, I'd go dig it. I ain't scared to ask anybody a question, you know. And uh, my little 19-year-old son, I hand him my whole pedal board at about 12, 13 years old. And, man, you know, I mean, he's over there inventing stuff on a whammy pedal that probably hadn't even been heard yet. And I'm like, I'm like, how would you do that, you know. And he's over there, just, you know, just the noise making stuff. But we call it controlled chaos because, uh, you know, it's pretty good. I'm, man, I, I just take it in from everybody. You know, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of music, so I'm all, you can always catch me out in the crowd. And I'm so guitar oriented, you know, I'm not going to be in front of the bass player, or the singer. I'm going to be in front of that that gunslinger out there. That's awesome, man. You know, uh, I'm glad to see, you know you're back. Everything's going well for you. Brand new band, merch coming out. You're you know you're, you're back to kick some ass. Randy Cooper, this is awesome. Uh, any, any closing words you got to say? Ah, uh, man, just you know, thank y'all for the support. Through through this, you know, it was a really uh, trying time through this last year, and um, you know, the uh, not only do I got fans up there, I make friends. You know, I'm the, I'm the guy that once I got backstage, I I couldn't stand it. I went out there where, where my friends are, and uh, that's it. You know, you're not gonna catch me hanging around backstage or sleeping in a motorhome or um, hanging at the hotel. You know, you're gonna catch me out in the crowd, um, right out there with with, with the people, and. Uh, that's me, you know. I'm a very approachable guy, and uh, you, you know, you know, I'm coming to your town or something like that. You know, um, it's like it ain't like I hope I meet him. It's yeah, we'll meet. I'll be out there. I'm easy to get to. All right, Randy, the arsonist Cooper, hell of a nice guy. I can attest to that. I've met him. Took the time to talk to me. Didn't know me from Adam, but gave me the time, like you just said. Brand new project. Give us the, the website and then info on the brand new project. Yeah, uh, Emperors and Elephants, and uh, right now there's some, uh, I think there's three tracks up of the demo versions of what we're working on on Reverb Nation. Send you over there, you know, the, uh, and that's just um, what was done right here in the jam room house. Uh, we were just tracking here, and uh, then the writing process, and now, you know, we got the full mill, uh, full record um, working on and polishing it up, and we're probably, man, I'm going to say a week away from all tracking, and then that's going to, you know, mix mastered and and uh, package that dude up. No release date on it or anything like that. But I mean, as soon as we get it done, uh, you know, there'll be a, there'll be a sample of it up. Uh, we're fixing to be the 420 uh, pick of the day for Will Rock Radio up here in Wisconsin. And uh, as soon as that blasts out, we we get a date on that. That's coming up pretty quick. Uh, we're gonna blast that out over the internet because it's all it's gonna be a uh, if everybody, you know, will get behind that thing and call in, they'll put us right on uh, regular rotation, huge radio station, 200-something thousand listeners. And uh, that's going to start, you know, set the fuse right there. We're uh, fixing to bust out a video. And uh, just be looking for it, man. It's all – it will keep everybody updated on the Facebook pages and on that. 
and uh, we're getting ready to lock this fuse. Awesome. Randy, thank you so much for giving us this interview, letting people know what's going on. People do care. People do love you. You do matter in the world, and it's, it's, it's awesome. Thank you very much, man. That's the first one I've done. I, you know, I've uh, had some stuff lined up coming from now, but I just didn't have it. You know, I want to talk about a project, you know, of what and, and direct them into uh, something I could get involved in, and that's that's what I've been waiting on. You know, I've just patiently rolled through, uh, just trying to, you know, find that little niche for me, man. And, I, and, and the best thing about it is, uh, you know, this is uh, familiar faces that I'm around and people that was right here. Um, you know, with me, man, already, already right there. And, uh, you know, these eight, nobody knew that I just met. I didn't join in, uh, you know, a band that I'm any, you know, I know every member of this band. I've been around them for a while and I, I feel fortunate I'm in a opportunity like that. And man, I'm surrounded by an elite, uh, class act players, some badasses. So I can't wait to get it out there. Boy. We can't wait to hear it. R- Randy, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, sir. Thanks, buddy. Hit me up anytime, man. We'll see you and keep you updated, buddy. I'll see you later, man. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.